Blessings to those that will be blessed by this. Today I'm talking about Hosea and a few hidden uh, prophecies that I've kind of seen through all this. Oftentimes people talk about Hosea and Gomer and her being unfaithful. And especially in chapter 2, which is actually incorrect, to say the least. Um, if you actually look in verse, um, starting at chapter 1, verse 8, it says, you know, um, Now, when she had weaned lo Rama, or Rehama, I think that's how it says, uh, she conceived and bare a son. Then God, uh, then said God, call his name lo Ami. For you are not my people, and I will not be your God. Well, that's the start of the whole speech. Chapter 2 is basically when Gomer is holding the newborn baby. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't see someone that's just given birth to a child and... The father, God's basically speaking all through chapter 2. Gomer is not the unfaithful one here. Who is then the unfaithful one? Well, as you start reading the chapter, you start getting a better understanding that this is God talking about Israel being the unfaithful wife. All right? And I know in chapter 3 it talks about buying her back, but uh, she never left. It never says anything about her leaving to begin with. And I know Hosea is being a kinsman redeemer in a sense. God was using him as that. Or at least a parable or a life lesson of a kinsman redeemer. <clears throat> so what then is really happening? And who are the children then that are playing with the mother? That's a good question. And most people don't understand it. And I remember when I was ending my 21-day Daniel fast, basically the Lord told me chapter 2 was an end-time prophecy. I was like, that, that would probably blow most people's minds out the door. <clears throat> but then the Lord just kind of confirms it uh, sometime later. And lo and behold... I come across this verse in Romans, chapter 9, <clears throat> starting at, uh, what is it, verse, chapter 9, verse um, 24. Even us, whom he has called, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles, all right? <clears throat> and that, as he said also in Hosea, it's, it's spelled out O-C in Romans, so sometimes you read it and you don't, don't know it's actually Hosea. I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not my beloved. And it shall come to pass, in the place where it was said of them, You are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Uh, who is, he's talking about, you know, those the Jews, and also the Gentiles, that are Christians. That are, are Christian people. And so what is it actually saying here? It's like those children... So Israel is the mother, and the children are us. Yeah, the children are us. And he's saying to the Christians, plead with Israel. You know, because they have, they have defiled the land. They need to repent and turn back to the Messiah. That's Jesus Christ, isn't it? All right? So, and then... Uh, there was another part in another uh, in Jeremiah that God was kind of linking this all together. And in uh, Jeremiah chapter 16, and I'm going to start at um, verse 18. And first I will recompense their iniquities and their sin double because they have defiled my land. They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of the detestable and abominable things. And this is what Israel has done in the modern day sense. O oh Lord, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in the day of my affliction. So in the day that Israel is afflicted, this is what the Gentiles will do. Or I should say, this is what the Christians will do. 
the Gentiles shall come unto thee. So this is, they're coming unto Israel and saying, Come unto thee from the ends of the earth, and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanities, and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know, and I will cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know my name is the Lord. And so you see that in the day that Israel is afflicted, you're going to have the Christian Gentiles, if you will, coming to Israel, pleading with them, as it says in Hosea, plead with them. All right. And then when you get into chapter three of Hosea, he says, yeah, go love another woman. And oftentimes I was actually looking it up. Sometimes that Greek or not that Greek word, but the Hebrew word is also sometimes translated again, or another, or moreover. And so he's basically saying, go take another wife. <clears throat> and uh, yet uh, adulteress, because you got to remember the description here is a completely different description than the first one. So there are two different types. And even God was kind of confirming this also, when I was looking at um, Samson and his life, the first one was a very similar description that um, God said to Hosea about, you know, adulteress. What was Samson's whole ordeal? Well, she was a whore. She considered her to be a whore, and she basically got sent to all the other people. And then the other woman that um, Samson had to deal with is a very good description of what God is actually talking about right here. Um, in Hosea, you know, she was an adulteress um, that Samson had to deal with. And, you know, loved wine, all that stuff. And so I just saw that there's a correlation even between the woman that Samson had to deal with and the, the woman that Hosea even had to deal with. And I just found that quite interesting in itself, too. But here we see that Hosea is actually being like a kinsman redeemer um, for these people or for these women. And so first off, you see that God is redeeming the Gentiles and then later he's redeeming also Israel itself. And so... I'm going to start in chapter 3, uh, verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, without a prince, and without the sacrifice, and without an image, without an ephah, and without a temphrony. I can't pronounce that correctly. And after the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God. So they have to return and seek the Lord their God. And David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. All right? So they're going to seek David, their king. Who is David, their king? They're going to seek Jesus. All right? So that's what it's saying here. So if you look in Jeremiah, in the day of their affliction, the Gentiles are going to come. Those are the Christian Gentiles, I believe. They're going to say, we have inherited lies. And they're going to plead. And then when you see in Hosea, this is the prophecy. Because we got to remember... In Romans, Paul's talking about who are the children in Hosea. The children are us Christians. What is God saying? He's saying to plead with them, to plead with Israel. And that's when it happens in the day of the affliction. And then when you go into Hosea, the end of the chapter 4, they shall return and seek the Lord their God, David, and the, as their king. And that David is Jesus. And basically, he's saying, it's like they have played the harlot. They have done all this stuff. They have been like this. You know, this is Israel in a sense nowadays. You know, a love a woman, beloved of her friends. We love Israel. Those that are called to Christ should be loving Israel, okay? Yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord towards the children of Israel, who look to other gods in the love of wine or fragrance of wine, and, you know, that's the description of Israel in a lot of sense nowadays. They go and look to other things, to other 
all this stuff to try to make peace. And they sell their land trying to make peace. It doesn't bring peace. Who is the one that it's Jehovah that brings the peace? It's God. It's Jesus that brings the peace. You know, oh, we got to pray for Israel. You know, pray for their peace. We say that. But also, that moreover, they need Jesus. It says, in the latter days shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. You know, he's that has not yet been fulfilled. They have not started to seek Jesus as their king yet. And that has to be fulfilled. You know, because what is it saying? It's like in, the, in Jeremiah, it's talking about, you know, in the day of their afflictions, the Gentiles are going to come preaching to them. <laughs> and let's face it, you have the end time prophets. They're even prophesying in Jerusalem or wherever. Maybe it's somewhere else they're prophesying. I don't think they're just going to be stuck in one location, I think. <clears throat> but we also see that Lord says to plead with Israel. And I pray right now that Israel as a nation, will turn back to their king, Jesus. In Jesus' name, let it be done and let it be quickly solved. In Jesus' name, amen and God bless you all. Bye.